Hello and welcome back again. Remember that you can follow the event through the Twitter account at Activate Project. And now let's welcome our next guest. They will participate in a round table about the emerging opportunities and challenges in the post-COVID era, whose priority is to fulfill the life and health needs of our seniors. Sergio Guillén will chair this session with the virtual presence of the panelists. So Sergio, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ainoa. So far in this uh, e um, event, um, we have been talking about uh, activate results. It is part of the, of the past, of the heritage, of the legacy of activate. Now we want to uh, move to uh, foreseeing the future. So in the next sessions, we will talk about the future. So we cannot ignore in this moment the most incredible um, and uh, amazing situation that the, 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 the world is suffering through the COVID-19, which is impacting dramatically in our lives, on all the aspects of our life, in the economy, in on the industry, on insurance, but particularly uh, with a, 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 a very, very high uh, impact in healthcare and in social care. We see that uh, our uh, senior people have been particularly suffering a lot about the consequences of the COVID-19. And this is a new experience for all of us in the world. So in Activate, even though we have uh, the, 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 the pandemic has started just in the last months of the, of the project, we have experienced the dramatic impact of COVID in our users. So the reaction of, of the uh, uh, activation in that moment was intending to supply additional uh, services and efforts according to the new needs and the new conditions that uh, erupted suddenly in, in, in our, in our uh, sites. So the necessity, for instance, of having more uh, deploy to provide services to many people that apparently was not needed before, but as a consequence of the isolation, as a consequence of the lockdown, apparently new, 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 new needs, uh, the necessity to, re, um, to have technologies that are more enabled to auto configuration, to very soon uh, deployment in more massive, uh, uh, so a lot of uh, conditions that uh, we didn't consider before in our designs. So what is important um, is not only how we react in, this, in the short term, but what is important is that uh, we are rethinking and uh, how we are going to redesign the new services for the time of the uh, post-COVID uh, 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 era. So, but I want to talk about the, the future. With the lesson learned in the last eight months in all the world, I, want, I would like that we start projecting in the, in the future because it is important for the continuation of uh, Activate. And for this, I have uh, invited, I, I invite um, uh, three experts uh, in, the, in the domain from the uh, consumer electronics uh, multinational company um, to uh, industry experts in the field of uh, IoT and social uh, experts that will uh, invite to join me virtually uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, session. And I, I want to uh, uh, invite uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Maite Pozo. She is um, the coordinator of the network of uh, friendly cities and communities for all the people in Spain. And she belongs to a very well-known Inserso organization. The second uh, uh, guest is uh, Mr. Kit Lam. Uh, he is the, the um, chief uh, innovation officer of Samsung R&D uh, uh, Institute in the UK. And my third guest is Mr. Damir Filipovic. He is the general <coughs> director of IoTI, the uh, Alliance for IoT Innovation. 
and which is an expert in the uh, in consumer uh, electronics in the industry and obviously in the field of uh, IoT which is in the core of uh, Activate uh, activity so just to go directly to the to the point I will uh, formulate uh, one question that I want my guest to answer from the respective perspectives from your sector's perspective what are the major opportunities and uh, challenges for the small living environments and activation domain in the post-COVID time? So I will give the floor to um, Kit Lam, uh, and then uh, uh, we'll hear his uh, uh, opinion about this uh, question. Thank you, Kit. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Sergio. So for the post-COVID uh, era and in respect to silver uh, economy, and as everyone knows, the, gener uh, the population in Europe are getting older. And by 2060, it will be one in every three will be over 65. So, but it could be uh, opportunity as well because the, this generation, the civic uh, economy uh, generation or baby boomers are the most wealthy uh, generation for uh, a long, long, for most uh, wealthy generation. And being aging in good health allow us to do uh, more traveling, learn new things and live um, uh, independently and safely in their, in their own home. That's where active age comes in. And also work for longer years. And to do that, you had to be uh, healthy and also the workplace need to adapt to enable, enable that to happen. Next. Uh, in Europe, uh, the, uh, we are set up to take advantage of the silver economy because there are a lot of uh, uh, research and in, in, uh, innovation based in Europe, also lots of SME and startup in this area, and also new ICT products such as care robots to help with uh, uh, assist people at home or healthcare or at work. Also mobile uh, health application being uh, used uh, more regularly, especially during COVID-19 is actually essential. Even I had one uh, used it for my, uh, uh, I had problems with my uh, inset bites and it worked wonderfully. Also, I got uh, the medicine through um, uh, smart uh, pharmacy and it works really, really fine. And the silver generation offer uh, new skills and uh, for tech jobs and actually pass on new skills for uh, younger workers. Also, the lower skill um, older generation could learn reskill to do other jobs. Uh, next, to give the example about uh, how uh, working environment or company could adopt uh, their um, their environment to to enable elderly people to work longer is uh, example is uh, for example Porsche. They change the way they make. Uh, the vehicle, rather than the vehicle are on a line that are on the floor. They actually, the vehicle actually above the workers, and there are special chairs that are made for pe uh, workers. Actually, uh, and tools on the arm, so they actually sit in a chair while whilst they're working on the car. Another company called, I think, uh, a process company in Germany. They ask uh, some of the skilled workers, elderly workers, to make video to uh, pass on to a new generation, also come back as a part-time consultant. So that's a way that where a company could help the older generation to, uh, to work longer and carry on with their skills because the population in some countries are so um, uh, low now the, the new skill force, uh, younger generation, are not there to take over the jobs. So they have to utilize the skill that the elderly people have to prolong their economy. Otherwise, their GDP will go down, like Germany and Japan. Those countries will definitely need to keep the, uh, the, the skill 
uh, older generation working for longer. And uh, I think, but to do that is is not a, such an easy thing because you, how do you get uh, the company to buy into this? And that is then you have to involve the HR department to, uh, to incentivize people to do that and the company to do that. And from active age perspective, the things we did to help people to live longer and, and the technology and, uh, and the middleware allow IoT equipment to work definitely will help in this area. Thank you very much, uh, Keith. I think that uh, you have uh, pointed out uh, two, three in, uh, very important uh, topics. One is uh, the process of conversions that uh, we have uh, facing in the post-COVID area, that uh, this is a, a new generation of people getting older that has a previous experience in using uh, technology. And this is very important, what you call the baby boom. And in the other side is the global digitization of uh, the, uh, the um, uh, industry, the, all the aspects in our valley, including healthcare and, and, and social care. And this, they will, uh, they will uh, uh, create a synergy that in a, in, in a way that uh, uh, all the people can continue being working within the conditions that, uh, to the work that are enabled by digital technologies and so forth, and the examples that uh, you mentioned. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Keith, for your valuable uh, uh, intervention. So I want to give now the floor to Damir from the uh, IOTI representing the, f the field of IoT, and then IoT in health solutions, and for IoT for health uh, solutions and, and social care. So, Damir, the floor is yours now to address my question. Thank you, Sergio. So basically, I think that um, we can start from the lessons learned from COVID-19, which actually, I think, showed how the connectivity resilience and applications are important and actually could be literally a life savior in situations like we faced a couple of months ago, and it seems that are still uh, resurfacing again. So on the connectivity part, what I think what was shown is that the next generation connectivity becomes more and more important because it provides not just a basic connectivity, but also sort of the mesh of the various connectivity solutions that are now becoming more important than ever, because like you mentioned, people were uh, confined, they were at home in isolation, and that was actually their, um, we can call it window to the world, and uh, in, in respect to the ActiveH project, that was uh, really uh, a help for the people with, uh, with needs. So I think that this is something that uh, is becoming more and more important, and brings us to the convergence of the various technologies, uh, and this is why the uh, efforts that the Commission is uh, uh, wanting to have in, in future partnerships under the Horizon Europe, uh, like smart networks and services, where we are also active as the organization, becomes, I would say, the forefront of, of activities. Second, on applications, I think that uh, what is, I think, very clear, and it was clear from the, from the COVID situation, connectivity needs upgraded interfaces. It's not just enough to have the connectivity or speed you have to know what to do with this connectivity and how to use it either for business or for the, I would say, social services and, and for the healthcare. And this is now also becoming very important and it's here to stay for the future. It will not go away with the COVID, uh, COVID situation. And now what we are at least working as the IoTI is to see how we can fit these purposes, including in a health area, into the Horizon Europe and Digital Europe uh, priorities, and then get this moving in the next, um, we can call it find, uh, funding period. And that also includes something that is coming up as a more and more important. And this is what we call computing continuum between the IoT, connectivity, edge computing, AI. And this is uh, something that we are working now on to see how this can be explored further. And then on a third point, and this is my last point, on the resilience, it showed that basically connectivity and applications are great, but the thing is that only resilient and secure communications, connectivity and devices, and then services and applications built on them can actually bring, so to speak, peace of mind to the users and to the community. So without basically resilience and security, all the connectivity and applications are 
I would say, less of interest. So I think this is something that we can both use as a lesson from COVID and as a, some sort of the stepping stones where do we need obviously to work more to make sure that the good results of active HR, I would say, promulgated and then even improved in the next funding period. Well, thank you very much um, because it was very, very, very clear. I think uh, your ideas of, uh, first of all, you talk about connectivity because we are facing now a new era of connectivity with 5G. Uh, it is, it is a, a clear and then the impact that 5G will have in, in, the, in the health and, and, and social care domain is something that we have to, 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 to look into the, uh, into the, into the future. Uh, and then uh, continuity of computing capacities. So the distributed yeah. capacity of creating data and information at all levels of the value chain, from data to uh, AI and big data. Um, and the third, uh, you said resilience. I, I hear this, this word every day, everywhere, because we say we are resilient. We must be resilient. And this is one of the demonstrations how societies people individually uh, and the people as well are resilient to take care and to, um, to, um, of, this, uh, of this situation. I will come later with a question to you. So I want to invite now uh, Maite, Maite Pozo. From the other side of the, of the, of the coin, uh, she is the, in the side of the demand. She needs that solutions, she, she, well, she, the, the, the world that she represents needs of uh, solutions, need of this. But uh, I, I, I know that uh, um, Maite, uh, as a message, yeah. as an idea uh, to, to, to respond, respect uh, to, the, the, to the challenges that are coming in the next uh, times. Maite. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Sergio. And I just wanted to clarify that the initiative of the network of cities um, that are friendly with elderly is a World Health Organization initiative, and it is going to be implemented worldwide. And the INSERSO where I work, they are in charge of spreading this, disseminating this, and bringing it down locally at the municipality level. Because in the end, that is the administration that is closest to citizens. Why does the World Health Organization launch this initiative? We've already talked about the demographic aging of the population, which generates friendly spaces for our elderly people to facilitate facilitate or promote, in turn, healthy and active aging. In this process, the opinion of the elderly and their participation are crucial. That is why what Sergio said about listening to the community and what are their demands and needs for this session, I have selected four. The initiative gathers the comments of elderly people in different spheres, but the pandemic has manifested many which were already present and has reinforced or made visible others that perhaps were under the radar. If with the aging of the population requires increasing dissemination of information, and this was a tool and a need in the post-COVID-19 era, after the pandemic, promoting healthy and active aging is even more crucial. So what are their comments? I have selected the comments from those who have answered these questions. Firstly is the digital gap due to their age difference. Also their housing situation, the loneliness, as we talked about in the previous session, and also in their care. These are four areas of influence which are interconnected. And there's a great need. The elderly people have demonstrated that there's great need to make these four spaces friendly to them. And this is not only a physical, it is also, as Sergio said, a social space. We need to work and implement 
activities and take measures in the social and physical spaces because they really need that social element to be friendly to them. And perhaps if we work on the physical and we disregard the social, it's no good to them. So in these four spheres that they mentioned, because of their age, the digital gap, interestingly enough, the pandemic has meant that many elderly people have started using devices for the first time or perhaps they use this communication technology less. So many elderly people are using communication technologies much more, but they still require training. They are demanding friendly technologies for them, for their age group. That is why it is essential to ask them what their needs are. The social dimension is also a part of the digital gap because you can supply the technological component we know because they provided us with much insight as to what might be useful but what about the social dimension the person may have a tool to communicate but they need someone to talk to they need someone to communicate with they may have access to a tool to make it easier to participate in a class, for instance, uh, gymnastics for elderly, or a literary talk. But they need those classes, the training, to be of interest. You know, it shouldn't be something that bores them to death, or teen novels, for instance, something out of their scope. So, it's all about matching the physical to the social dimensions. Also their home, the place they live in. In order to have healthy and active aging, they need to have the ability to live in their homes. That's what they want to do. More than 80, nearly 90% of our elderly people say, I want to live in my house. We need tools, technology to facilitate so they can continue staying at home and living in their homes. And technology also has a lot to contribute in this sense as well. Because many of them live alone and they suffer from loneliness. Perhaps your home is very adapted, but you need someone there to walk alongside you, a neighborhood that doesn't discriminate you, a shop okay. in your neighborhood that is suitable and friendly to elderly people so that you want to go to your neighbors and, and walk around. And finally, the last element, which is very connected, if the care they receive were a bit visible now, the pandemic has proven, also in terms of housing, to connect it, they need assistance in their home, care provided to them in their homes. Oh. And not only when they're elderly, because when we need care, it's at any time throughout our lives. When you need care, you need it in your home. So all the technology and the models to provide this care must be close to the people who need them. Okay. So that we can generate friendly spaces. Thank you very much. Uh, you touch a lot of uh, uh, key issues, uh, which are uh, essentially important. Some of them has been uh, obviously very well uh, addressed by, by ActiveAge, for instance, service at home. IoT is delivering service for independent living, for uh, extending the time that the people live uh, with independence at, uh, at home, making home uh, better. But there is another big movement in this moment that uh, as attracting the, the interest of the big industry, uh, the politicians, which are the uh, smart cities. And in this morning, in the, in the, in the talk of Maria Teresa, she told about that uh, more than 90% of the population is going to be in cities, in urban environments. And the smart cities is what, but the point is that uh, you are not talking about smart city, you are talking about friendly cities. 
So I, in, when, when talking about uh, uh, smart city, we are talking a lot of technologies for energy, for transportation, for uh, watering, for many things that are really uh, important. But the, the, the way of the uh, older people live in the big cities or medium-sized cities um, uh, uh, is even more important than the other ones. And then it is important that the, the conversions of the, uh, the cons and, and needs that come from the side of the, the people that uh, you are talking about friendly cities, which is a different concept than the smart city. But they are to, going together. So I would like to, to, to move to a last question to, to Damir which is connected because I, I, I like the, the continuity of, of computing. And then we in Activate has been advocating a lot on the, on the need to move computing capacity in the edge. Uh, in the second step is to embed AI in the edge. And this is the, the something that uh, we are going to face in the, in the next future, in the next, in the next wave, in the next generation. Can you tell us? Uh, very briefly, because we are just uh, running out of time. What is, in your opinion, the trend in this moment in edge computing and the continuity of computing uh, and AI capacity across the, the value chain? That's actually a very good question. And this is exactly now what the LTI is trying to focus, not only by when, when preparing our strategic research innovation agenda, but also we already provided input to the high performance computing and big data and AI um, future partnerships. So their strategic research and innovation agenda exactly because we understood that none of these partnerships, uh, including connectivity cannot stand alone, but they are part of this, I would say continuum. And we just also joined the so-called Transcontinuum Initiative, which basically links all of those partnerships and other partners, including AITI, to try to see in some future calls how exactly the questions that you raise can be connected and then um, I would say approached and then offer some concrete solutions, which I think that then could be of a help also to the, to the active age and I would say future uh, similar projects. And the whole idea that we are now looking at least in RTI is exactly how to provide, um, I would say this picture of the continuum uh, what what this entails, and then what could be the proper concrete application in a very, uh, various vertical sectors, including health domain. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, um, Dami. Thank you, Maite. Thank you, Kit, uh, for this uh, very interesting uh, intervention from your sites. Our opinions are very valid. And I think that uh, um, you are a picture, uh, doing the picture of uh, an amazing uh, opportunities and challenge for the for for the future. I guess that Activate did a, a, a good w a work in stepping into to be in position really to address that uh, that uh, post COVID uh, future. And then I close the the session. Thank you very much indeed to you all for contributions and say bye bye and stay safe. <laughs>